and welcome to The Watchman. Well, a new U.S. administration is preparing to take office, and President-elect Trump has vowed that he will stand with Israel, including at the U.N., where the favorite pastime of the so-called international community is to demonize the Jewish state. Folks, talk about a time where evil is called good and good is called evil. Did you know that in 2016, the U.N passed more resolutions against Israel than any other nation? That includes notorious human rights abusers like Iran, North Korea, China, and Cuba. That's UN, unbelievable. And the last of those anti-Israel resolutions of 2016 was the most bitter. Why? Because the outgoing US administration led by President Obama stood by and let it happen. What the UN is saying here is that the eastern half of Jerusalem, which includes the Western Wall, the Temple Mount, and the Jewish quarter of the Old City, are illegally occupied territory. In other words, the Temple Mount, the holiest site in Judaism and sacred to Christians as well, where Solomon and Herod's temples once stood, where Jesus taught and chased out the money changers, is illegally occupied territory, illegally occupied by Israel. What the UN is saying, folks, is that Israelis building homes and playgrounds in Jerusalem and in the West Bank, known in the Bible as Judea and Samaria, are the main obstacle to Middle East peace. Not relentless Palestinian terrorism and not the Palestinian leadership's refusal to recognize Israel's right to exist. Oh no, it's Israel's fault. And guess what? The United States, which could have vetoed this shameful resolution, let it pass. Not only that, according to Israeli officials, the Obama administration actually worked behind the scenes to help put the resolution together and promote it at the UN. On December 23rd, no less, the eve of Hanukkah and Christmas Eve. Here's Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Over decades, uh, American administrations and Israeli governments have disagreed about settlements, but we agreed that the Security Council was not the place to resolve this issue. We knew that going there would make negotiations harder and drive peace further away. And uh, as I told John Kerry on Thursday, friends don't take friends to the Security Council. Here's the problem. The Obama administration is not Israel's friend. Some people call the administration's actions at the UN a stab in the back coming in the last weeks of President Obama's time in office. A final petty parting shot from the president at Israel. I call it a stab in the front because if you follow the administration's stance towards Israel the past eight years, culminating in the disastrous Iran nuclear deal, what happened at the UN should have been no surprise. And then, a few days later, Secretary of State John Kerry twisted the knife in a bit further. They have a choice. They can choose to live together in one state or they can separate into two states. If the choice is one state, Israel can either be Jewish or democratic. It cannot be both. And it won't ever really be at peace. So Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East, cannot remain a democracy if it continues to be the world's one and only Jewish state? This flies in the face of the reality on the ground. To sum it up, during his 73-minute speech, Kerry mentioned the supposed Israeli occupation of places like Eastern Jerusalem twice as many times as he did Palestinian terrorism. Amazing. ISIS is on the march. Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran are gearing up for war. Women and children are being slaughtered in Aleppo, Syria. Yet the Obama administration and the UN are obsessed with Israel. Here was Prime Minister Netanyahu's response to Kerry's speech. Israelis do not need to be lectured about the importance of peace by foreign leaders. Israel's hand has been extended in peace to its neighbors from day one, from its very first day. We pray for peace. We've worked for it every day since then. Folks, it's for times like these that Christians United for Israel exists. 
We are America's largest pro-Israel organization with 3.3 million members nationwide and growing every day. We've got a strong response to this shameful UN resolution that we're going to be telling you about here on the show a bit later this month. It's gonna be big. The body of Christ is going to send a message to the UN and our government about Israel, and you can be a part of it. You see the information there on your screen, so join with us, join Kufi, join this mighty movement of God as we stand up for Israel for such a time as this. Well, one person who's doing exactly that is Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, Danny Danone. Ambassador Danone is doing a remarkable job making the case for Israel at a hostile UN. And he sat down with us recently to discuss his role and the new friends, yes, friends, Israel is making throughout the world. Take a look. Ambassador, I wanted to start with the UN, obviously. We hear so much about the bad when it comes to Israel at the UN, but we had some very good news recently. Uh, you were named to head a permanent committee at the UN General Assembly. This was a big deal, the first time an Israeli did that. Tell us why that was so important for you personally and for the state of Israel. First of all, I agree with you. The UN is still hostile to Israel. If you look at the number of resolutions against Israel compared to the resolutions against Syria, with all the atrocities in Syria, you, you cannot un understand that. Why they are focusing only in Israel, and they don't deal with the real issues. But we, we had a great achievement. When I was elected to chair the legal committee, the sixth committee at the UN, to be the first Israeli ever to serve as a chairman of a committee of the General Assembly, indeed it was a great achievement. And you should have seen, Eric, the, the great democracies of Iran, Yemen, they were opposing my nomination, saying that Israel should not head a committee. But at the end, we, we went to a vote. It was a secret ballot. And I received the support of 109 uh, countries that stood and supported uh, my nomination. And uh, we are thankful for that. And for us, it's a great opportunity to show that we can do so much and we can actually show the real face of Israel. Yeah, I want to talk about some of the great things going on at the UN for Israel that you're spearheading. Uh, but as you said, there's a reputation well-earned at the UN for hostility towards Israel, to say the least. In your time here as Israel's ambassador to the UN, what have you seen firsthand? Uh, what has the experience been like in, in combating that hostility? And we had the UNESCO resolution recently, which was ridiculous on a lot of levels. But what's it been like for you personally? How do you navigate that hostility as the ambassador? Further, I saw the gap between the, the private UN and the public UN. Privately, the ambassador will tell you exactly what they think about Israel, and they appreciate, they even admire Israel, Eric. And that is amazing to see. They want to learn. They, they want to meet. But uh, when it comes to the public arena, when it comes to the Security Council or the General Assembly, unfortunately, they repeat the same old slogans against Israel. And my goal is to change it. And I'm pushing them. Whatever you tell me publicly, privately, make it publicly also. Yeah. And you are, you're really forming some, some relationships with other diplomats here from other countries, Ambassador. Uh, I think there was a trip to see Fiddler on the Roof with some fellow diplomats. Yeah, I call it uh, soft diplomacy. Yes. So we, we invest a lot in soft diplomacy. We held a, a seder inside the UN for Israel's Independence Day. We invited the ambassadors to see Fiddler on the Roof on Broadway. It was a great show. It was a great evening. Uh, and we do a lot of events that actually we show Israel, and we invite them to come to Israel. You, you go a lot to Israel, Eric, even more than me. <laughs> but uh, we take ambassadors to Israel. I will be heading the, a second delegation that will go to Israel, and over there we'll be able to meet the people of Israel. We, can, we will fly with a helicopter. We will show them the borders, and they will see the challenges. So w when you are there at a helicopter, and, and you see the Mediterranean Sea, and, and you see Judea and Samaria, you understand the story. Up next, more with Ambassador Danny Danone. Who are some of Israel's new friends in the world? The answer may surprise you. It's the Watchmen, it's Christians United for Israel, only right here on TBN. Stick around.